Yo, what is going on, you cringe crowbat? Coming at you with my Surging Sparks set review and buy list. If you want access to the buy list, I will leave it as a link in the description below. You can check it out there. Before we jump into it, though, if y'all are in need of some Surging Sparks products, Game Grid SLC has got you covered. They got Surging Sparks available over there, booster boxes, ETBs, you name it. They got it. So if you need anything, go check it out over at GameGridSLC.com. Link, of course, will be in the description. And you can use code AzulGG over there as well to get yourself a discount. Shout out to Game Grid, as always, for sponsoring me as a competitor in the Pokemon TCG and with all my content here on the YouTube channel and with the live streams. All right. So... Certain sparks. There's not, I think I said this last set too, to be honest. There's not that much going on here, but let's go ahead, let's get into it. Um, I'm sure y'all, some of y'all have never seen this site before, and I actually forgot it existed myself. This is on the official Pokemon website. It is like an official set list or like set image gallery type thing. I'll leave a link for this in the description as well, because I'm sure some of y'all have never seen this before, as I just rediscovered it the other day myself. Uh, the first card we're going to talk about is this Execute or execute, 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 this execute with the precious evolution attack. For a colorless energy, if you go first, you can use this attack during your first turn. Search your deck for a card that evolves from this Pokemon and put it onto this Pokemon to evolve it, then shuffle your deck. So with these buy list set review videos that I've been doing recently, I've been trying to future proof my buy list as much as possible within reason. And this did make it to my buy list as a four of. The Executor EX did not make it on my buy list, but this is such a powerful attack that if there's ever a good Executor in the future, this is probably the Execute you will be using because this is an insanely powerful attack on an Evolution Pokemon. Just kind of absurd, to be honest. So made it to my buy list as a four of. Moving on, Durant also made it to my buy list as a one of. And I'm going to be talking about other cards that didn't make it to my buy list as well, but specifically going to be calling those out and how money made it onto the buy list. Durant EX made it to my buy list as a one of. It's got this sudden shearing ability. When you play this card from your hand onto your bench, during your turn, you may discard the top card of your opponent's deck. So this could be a pretty cool win condition card in some kind of stall or mill. I guess this would be the mill card in the deck or control deck where you like trap something in the active and then your win condition is to deck out your opponent with sudden shearing and you could just bench it use sudden shearing turrow it or penny it pick it back up put it in your hand bench it again sudden shearing repeat until you've decked your opponent out of course that would require a lot of turrows but we have pal pads stuff like that so it would be possible theoretically so i think you'd only ever want one of these in a deck like that so it only made it to my buy list as a one of with the uh, sudden shearing durant ex Okay, let's move quite right along here. Up next, we have uh, Victini. I guess that was, was that all the grass Pokemon? I think that was all the grass Pokemon we're talking about. Up next, we have the Victini with the Victory Cheer ability. Attacks used by your Evolution Fire Pokemon do 10 more damage to your opponent's active Pokemon. Nothing right now that I think this would be played in, but it's a pretty powerful ability that we've seen in the past be utilized in decks. Um, right now, Maridon decks are playing the Zapdos that says your Lightning Pokemon do 10 more damage. Uh, this is only for evolution fire pokemon but i still think it's definitely worth having around it made it to my buy list as a two of i could definitely see playing two of this in some kind of evolution fire deck especially when we have stuff like area zero in the format then you have plenty of room to put a couple of these in play get a little bit of extra damage for your fire pokemon like i said right now nothing really that i think would uh, make sense to include it with but in the future i think it'll find a partner for sure if it's only even if it's only a one of in that deck uh, the Serilege EX did make it onto my buy list. First, we're going to talk about the Char Cadets, though. I did only add the 70 HP Char Cadet to my buy list. Uh, it's a little bit different than the other Char Cadets we have available. There's a lot of Char Cadets. There's like four or five of them that have been printed. This one, I think, is by far the best, though. It's got the 70 HP, so you can buddy Poffin for it. It has one retreat cost, and then it's attack Willow a Wisp for one Fire Energy. does 20 damage. So I think it's the most efficient Char Cadet in the format so that that made its way to my buy list as a four of up next we do have the sarah ledge ex which also made it to my buy list as a four of i think if you are going to be playing a deck around this card you would want four and i think it has competitive potential basically any card big cards like this that i think have competitive potential will make it to my buy list but yeah the abyssal flames for one fire energy 20 damage for each energy in our discard pile the raging athematis how, did I pronounce that correctly? Don't tell me. Fire Psychic Metal for 280. Discard all energy from this Pokemon is not as good. It really is all about that first attack. The 30 plus 20 for each energy in the discard pile. Pretty turbo aggressive. One prize or one hit KO, two prize deck. We do have quite a few of those in the format. But 
I do think this one has potential in the future. It's a little bit different, and it does evolve from a one prizer, which is something like something that's something like a Raging Bolt deck can't do, right? You have Raging Bolt in play, it's worth two prize cards. You have a Charcadet in play, it's only worth one prize card, and you can then eventually turn it into a two prize Pokemon. So that's where the advantage of playing something like a Sarah Ledge or like a Golden Go EX comes from, is that it starts as a one prize Pokemon. And then I did also add one of this Sarah Ledge to my buy list as well. Lugia is still a current deck in the format, and if Sarah Ledge is good enough, but the Lugia matchup is something you want to tech for, then teching one of these Sarah Ledges into the deck could be worth it. That Cursed Edge attack for one colorless energy, discard all special energy from all of your opponent's Pokemon. That's not terrible, to be honest. So yeah, I added this as a one of just because Lugia is still around. If it ever lines up, Sarah Ledge is good. And you want a tech card for Lugia, the Sarah Ledge makes sense. Lugia does rotate with rotation, which is about six months away. So after that, I don't know where we'd ever use this Sarah Ledge, but it could still find a home after that. There might be some heavy special energy deck moving forward from there. All right, let's move on here. Up next, I got the Melodic, which also made its way onto my bias. Oh, actually, I put the Paldean uh, Taurus on my bias as well. Uh, it's attack for two colorless energy. You may put two energy attached to your opponent's active stage two Pokemon into their hand. Seems like a potentially interesting control card. It works with double turbo energy up against stuff like Dragapult and Charizard. You can immediately put the energy attached to their active Pokemon back into their hand, kind of rendering their active Pokemon useless unless they have some form of energy acceleration on the next turn. For Charizard, it would be another Charizard. And then for Dragapult, it would be something like a Crispin for turn. But it can make things really, really annoying for your opponent. So it made its way to, onto my buy list as one of annoying cards like this usually do because you just never know when a certain deck can turn a bad matchup into a good matchup by including something like this. Okay, for the Feebas for the Melodic, the Melodic made its way to the buy list, so let's talk about the Feebas first. This is just the best Feebas, or it's different, I would say, than the other Feebas. The Ascension Feebas is probably the best Feebas, but that one does rotate with rotation. So to kind of future-proof a little bit here, I added this Feebas to the buy list as a four of. And then the Melodic EX did make its way onto my buy list as a two of. I did put four Feebas, but I only put two Melodic. I could see you playing like a 3-2 Melodic maybe. So I went ahead and put four Feebas there. But only two Melodic EX, 270 HP. It's got that Sparkling Scales ability. Prevent all damage from and effects of attacks from your opponent's Terra Pokemon done to this Pokemon. We currently see that in the format in the form of stuff like Mimikyu and Ogre Pond, which are very, very good in their own right as wall or wall cards, wall cards, stall cards. Uh, Melodic is no different, I don't think. It'll definitely find its home in some kind of wall or stall deck in the future. And its attack is decent as well for a water and double colors. It is 160 damage. Your opponent's active is now asleep. Another thing about Sparkling Scales, it prevents effects as well. Not just damage, it also prevents the effects, something that like Mimikyu doesn't do. And honestly, off the top of my head, I don't remember if Fighting Ogre Pond prevents effects or if it's just damage i'm gonna search it up real fast ogre pond because i'm like literally blanking right now on what ogre pond does prevent all damage from attacks okay so the effects prevention as well is something interesting with Malak. now it is only up against terra pokemon but who knows where the meta will be going a couple months from now or a couple sets from now i should say terra pokemon might be the best there is so being able to beat him with melodic would sound pretty cool all right the uh, Black Kiram EX um, also made its way onto my buy list as just a one of. It could be like a cool tech card against Dragon decks in the future for three colorless energy. Its Ice Age attack does 90 damage. And then if your opponent's active, it's a Dragon Pokemon. It is now paralyzed. 230 HP, basic EX Pokemon. Theoretically could tech it into, I don't know, many different decks, of course. So it's going to fit slot into a bunch of different decks. doesn't really matter on what type of energy you play because it's all colorless energy and if you're having trouble with dragon decks and those dragon decks play none or very few switch cards the ice age could be your savior to set up for like two hits on a dragon pokemon in the future so one of as far as the uh black kiram ex goes um up next is the chi and pow also made it to my bias as a one of it's got that snow sink ability when you play this pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn you may discard a stadium in play now some people maybe remember Pumpkaboo, and when we had Pat to the Peak in format, P P P when we had Pat to the Peak in format, Pumpkaboo was a pretty big deal to include in some decks. There's no Pat to the Peak in the current format, but I could still see some potential use cases for Chi and Pao in the near future, and then in the distance future, who knows, but having this ability on hand is definitely going to be useful, uh, or could potentially be very useful, but in the current format, this is something that you could maybe Ultra Ball for, whereas if you want to be able to bump your opponent's stadium, you can't really go Ultra Ball to go find Vacuum or your own counter stadium if you want to, like, Iona your opponent, but then also bump their Pokestop. So now you could Ultra Ball for Chi and Pao, 
and bump the Pokestop, and then Iono your opponent, and then leave them with less resources to utilize on the other side of that Iono. So that would be like a potential use case for Chi and Pound in the near future. In the distant future, who knows what would come out that this would be good against. Pikachu EX, probably the best card in the set. Is that what I want to say? Do I want to say it's the best card? It might be that. Well, let me, well, trainer cards. There's some trainer cards that are probably better. It's a good card. It's a good card. Actually, Latias is probably better than Pikachu EX overall, but 200 HP, the ability is insanely powerful. Resolute Heart, if this Pokemon has full HP and will be knocked out by damage from an attack, it is not knocked out and its remaining HP becomes 10. And then the Topaz Bolt, 300 damage for Grass, Lightning, Metal, discard three energy from this Pokemon. So yes, I know. Dragapult's in the format. Dustnor's in the format. They, there's Halucha in the format. There's Reggie Drago that can copy Dragapult. So there's a lot of ways to get around the Resolute Heart ability. That doesn't not make it a good ability. The ability is still good. The attack does a lot of damage, although it is a high cost to pull off the attack. Um, there is potential to be a Pikachu EX deck, but at the very least, this will be slotted into Maridon Area Zero decks as the Terra Pokemon they use to get access to Area Zero. So at the very least, that's where Pikachu will find an immediate home. But in the future, maybe once we get a little bit away from stuff like Dragapult and Dusnor, there might be some hope for a straightforward Pikachu EX deck because that Resolute Heart ability is really good. I don't care how many ways there are to get around it. It's a good ability. If I could put this on my Charizard, I would. If I could put this on any Pokemon, I would. It's insane. Yeah, no real drawback from having Resolute Heart. Only positives. Make your opponent work harder for their KOs is never a bad thing. But because of the current meta we're in on release, I'm not sure how good Pikachu EX will be. And it does have a pretty costly attack. So people are very easily able to get around your Resolute Heart. The amount, the cost you have to invest to get to your Topaz Bolts is going to be uh, not worth the trade off of people being able to very easily knock out your Pikachu EX. But solid card nonetheless. Uh, I made its way to my Vilas as a four of. I think it's got that future potential to be like a three of or four of in a deck where it's just like straight Pikachu EX. So. Or of on the buy list. Uh, the Magneton made its way onto my buy list as a 2 2 because the Magnemite is the best Magnemite, I'm pretty sure that's out there, or it's just different. I, whenever I put them on my buy list, I usually make a note of if it's the best or just different. Different meaning like there could be a Magnemite out there that has an attack for like a colorless energy that like searches your discard pile for a basic lightning energy attaches to one of your bench Pokemon and it has like one retreat cost and 60 HP. So they would be same retreat cost, same HP, but just different attacks. So situationally, one could be better than the other. We see this um, actually currently in the format with uh, the Pidgeys that people use is that people aren't playing the Call for Family Pidgey anymore. It has the way better attack, but that 10 less HP, Dusclops being able to do 50 damage instead of, and not be able to do 60 damage is a pretty big difference for the Pidgeys. So that would be like a use case where you'd want one over the other. So this is definitely one you want to have access to. The Lightning Bolt for 20 with a Lightning Energy. You never know when that's going to come in clutch. So Magnemite is a uh, four of on the buy list. And then the Magneton is a two of, or excuse me, four of as well. Because we could definitely see a deck that is solely focused around Magneton. We get that four overvolt discharges in there. Once on your turn, you may attach up to three basic energy cards from your discard pile to your lightning Pokemon in any way you like. If you use this ability, this Pokemon is knocked out. So your opponent gets a prize card, but we get three basic energy to work with. This is definitely a, a powerful card to combine with Pikachu EX, but I think the home it's going to find immediately and be most effective is in just Maridon decks. Maridon decks would love a card like this. They're a two prize based deck that doesn't mind giving their opponent a single prize KO as like an odd prize card and then being able to take advantage of three more energy in play. That makes Raichu V really good in the deck again. That makes going back to back Iron Hands that much easier. That makes going back to back anything in Maridon so much easier because three energy is a lot of energy to work with. And I think this will be one of the main sources of energy acceleration for a potential Pikachu EX deck as well. So the Magneton makes its way to the buy list as a 4-4 as well. Up next, we got the Rotom with the Crushing Pulse for a basic Lightning Energy or for a Lightning Energy because it doesn't have to be basic. Your opponent reveals their hand, discard all item cards and tool cards you find there. So potentially a really powerful attack, but I don't think it's as good as people are making it out to be on Twitter. It's not going to be that devastating. If you think about like just like the current meta, current format decks, for instance, when would you actually get value out of this? You'd probably get value of it on literally like turn one going second against like Charizard decks or maybe Reggie Drago, but even then probably not. They'll probably play their E-switches turn one. And then later on against something like a Raging Bolt on like turn three or four, this could be pretty good as well after they built up like a 12 card hand, hit him with a Crushing Pulse, take away a bunch of energy retrievals, switch cards maybe, Ravy Charms even, and then I don't know, Vessels, Ultra Balls, <laughs> Nest Balls, you take away all that from them, 
that are like the 2k scenarios i can see this being good it didn't make its way to my buy list as a one of because once again there's having these like unique cards around it's just it's just good to have around it's just good to have around it definitely is a it's a good attack you know it's not bad but it's on a basic pokemon with 80 hp you know it's a little bit more iffy but yeah made its way to my buy list as a one of you know something nice to have around just in case uh, the maridon also made its way to my buy list as a one of with that code protect attack here potential in a future future box deck maybe lightning colorless does 40 damage during your opponent's next turn prevent all damage done to each of your future pokemon by attacks from pokemon ex if this pokemon is no longer active this effect ends so we've seen attacks like this or abilities like this be win conditions in decks i'm trying to think of a time um where i played a control zorark deck at laic 2016 2017 now i didn't do great in the tournament but one of the main reasons me and my group played that control zorark deck is because we were taking advantage of the fact that people didn't play many switch cards in their decks and that was one of the ways we were able to win a lot of games with a Sableye that said your opponent can't play a supporter from their hand. And the supporter that people could play to switch around their Pokemon was Guzma. So we trapped them out of Guzma, which means they couldn't switch their Pokemon and you could deck them out with a Sableye lock effectively because no one played the actual card Switch. Now, Switch is not what we're looking for people to not be playing against Maridon, but if Gust cards become pretty low in counts in decks, or even for just like a certain matchup in a potential future box deck in the future, uh, this could be a win condition in a certain matchup or even just a lightning deck, to be honest. This could even just win matchups in Maridon. You could put this in Maridon EX and go up against, let's say Raging Bolt to stop playing a one prize attacker and they just play really low gust counts for whatever reason. Then all of a sudden you just set this thing up with a generator turn one, go code protect and then win the game. That's pretty cool. So made its way to the buy list as a one of. You never know, once again, when cards like this are going to come up, just like that Sable I did for me and my group at LAIC that year. Um, I didn't do really well. I didn't do that great, like I said, but one of my teammates did take down the whole tournament. So want those cards handy and we were scrambling for sable eyes before the tournament so <laughs> just have them handy just in case let's talk about the togekiss real fast it's no more than a cool meme deck maybe even then this is one of those meme decks where it's maybe just a headache to set up stage two pokemon here wonder kiss when your opponent's active pokemon is knocked out flip coin of heads take one more prize card the effect of wonder kiss doesn't stack so even if you got four togekiss in play you only get to flip for one wonder kiss or maybe you could flip for all of them but even if you get heads they don't count how does that even work could you theoretically flip for all of them i actually don't know either way you can use one basically is what it's trying to say i assume no yeah i think you could flip for all the wonder kisses if you wanted to but it wouldn't matter like the other other effects of them wouldn't have resolved to anything even if you got like the first of the first one's tails even if you got heads on the rest of them i assume oh wait a second the effect of wonder kiss doesn't stack does that mean you could flip for all of them? And if you get heads on one of them, it counts. But if you get multiple heads, it doesn't count. I, I'm on, honestly, now I'm kind of lost on, on reading this card. Someone in the comment section, let me know. I know there's always a, well, there's people who have takes and opinions besides me. You guys aren't always right, but sometimes you're more right than I am. Uh, yeah, now I'm like second guessing how this card works. Let me know, comment section down below. Uh, Ezumeril is up next. Did not make the buy list, but another cool potential meme card. That Glistening Bubbles ability. If you have any Terra Pokemon in play, this Pokemon can use a double edge attack for a Psychic Energy. And the double edge attack does 230 damage. And then 52 itself. It only has 120 HP, but we're not two hit KOing ourselves. We would be three hit KOing ourselves. And that's only if our opponent doesn't KO our Ezumeril themselves. 230 damage for a single Psychic Energy on a stage one. Honestly, is not that bad, but... I don't think it quite cuts it. I don't think this is going to be a super powerful deck in the format. Yeah, the a new cool one prize deck is not emerging from Surging Sparks, I don't think. Yeah, as a Meryl, I don't think it's going to be getting there. Uh, as far as like the Terra Pokemon we could put in play, Fighting Ogre Pond is a good option because it can't be hit by anything with abilities. And then also Pikachu EX is a decent option as well because if it gets KO'd, it doesn't get KO'd. That's pretty good. So yeah, as a Meryl, cool meme deck, but no more than that. Up next, we got the Smoochum, which did make its way onto uh, my buy list as a two of. The Delightful Kiss for a zero energy. For a zero energy. Search your deck for up to two basic psychic energy cards and attach them to one of your bench Pokemon, then shuffle your deck. That's pretty powerful, to be honest. Um, I don't think there's any psychic Pokemon that immediately take advantage of this, but I'm just trying to think about like some type of setup deck. Like, I mean, Dragapult's not a great example. If you could like split the psychic energy, something like this in Dragapult could be interesting. 
because it has to go to one Pokemon, it makes it less good in something like that. But this card definitely has a potential bright future. Very powerful attack to use on your first turn of the game going second or second turn if you went first. Give you some energy acceleration tempo. Uh, up next, Latias X did make its way to the buy list as a two of most decks. I think that players will play one, but if it's that big of an impact in your deck, instead of playing like Heavy Ball or something like that, or when Heavy Ball rotates, you might want to be running two of these. That Skyliner ability, your basic ball want to play, have no retreat cost. That's pretty good. And it includes itself, which has two retreat cost, but because of the ability, is no retreat cost. That's just good. <laughs> That's just good. Um, it, actually, it is actually interesting that it does have two retreat costs. One way that you could, or actually, I can't think of any way. I guess one way that you could take advantage of that is you could like gust this up with Klefki, or I mean, I guess Klefki shuts this off no matter what. You could gust, gust it up with Fluttermane and then like attack with Fluttermane, 90 to the active, 20 to the bench, trap this in the active. I mean, if, if if this is being played in decks that don't play any switch cards because they're just using the Skyliner ability, that could be a way to take advantage of decks playing Latias as their sole way to move their Pokemon around. Then all of a sudden you can take advantage of that. It's kind of like what I was talking about with the Maridon earlier. Like sometimes when people aren't playing cards, look for ways to take advantage of those lack of cards. People aren't going to be playing switch cards because they got Latias in their deck. Maybe find a way to trap it in the active by shutting off its ability. It's a attack is kind of irrelevant. Double psychic energy and a colorless Eon Blade for 200. It's whatever, but it's really all about that. Uh, all about that ability on the Lottery CX. Honestly, I'm kind of disgusted by how good this card seems. How like it removes just like so many potential variables in stuff like Maridon and Raging Bolt. If this fits in Raging Bolt, I'm not really sure if it does fit on the bench space for Raging Bolt. But like you can't ever trap anything in the active anymore if they put this down. Like it, unless you have like some something like a Fluttermane, like I mentioned. But if you don't, it's just all your guys can move so you can't go like iono counter catcher or iono prime catcher to try and trap stuff and make some kind of like weird comeback type play it's just everybody's retreating um so i don't really like cards like this um it feels like it takes away a lot of fun potentially interactive gameplay and it like just removes all any flaws or things to exploit of decks sometimes so i'm not a huge fan of cards like this existing but we'll see how it plays out um, I did get the Uxi here on the buy list as a one of for the painful memories attack for a second energy, put two damage counters on each of your opponent's Pokemon. Could be cool in some type of guard war deck as like a spread option. You can go in there with the painful memories, put two on everything. Next turn, maybe you follow up with a couple monkey dories or do a couple monkey doors while you're painful memories in, and then you like TM Devo, right? That's like a lot of damage counters you're putting in play across the board to set up for like a big TM Devo play. So it's a pretty cool attack to have for something like that. Uh, the Dedenne, or Dedenne Ndidi, Dedenne first did make its way to my buy list as well. All right, let me first talk about Sylveon EX. Actually, we should go back. And did I miss anything else? I don't think I did. I don't think I missed anything else. Let's talk about the Meow Stick here real fast. Didn't make its way to the buy list. Got an interesting ability, though. You must discard a chill teaser toy, car toy card from your hand in order to use this ability. Once on your turn, you may switch one of your opponent's bench will go into the active spot. It's a very interesting ability here. And the Chill Teaser Toy card is an item card. So there definitely could be some cool combination with this card. Now, I don't think it's good. It didn't make its way to the buy list. I don't think it has that much competitive potential. But some kind of like Pokestop style deck, you can like Pokestop and then you don't or you do you, know, you don't discard the Chill Teaser Toys. They go to your hand. You don't have to use them immediately, but they stick around for later. And then all of a sudden it turns like gust effects like boss that you would normally lose into you don't lose them. And then they just go to your hand to then use with Beckoning Tail. Uh, in the future, which is actually kind of an interesting interaction with like Pokestop currently right now. Um, and then if boss's orders rotate, like I kind of expect it might, uh, Meowstic would become like a gust option. Although I think we have still have better options in the format than Meowstic. So that's why they didn't make its way to the buy list, but you could still make some kind of cool Pokestop deck around the beckoning tail, uh, gust effect, or like it synergizes well with Pokestop, I guess is what I mean to say. Um, Sylveani X also didn't make its way to the buy list. I don't think the Sylveani X has the potential it could in the future if we get more evolutions, but it didn't make its way to the buy list because I can't see the future. And this card on its own, I don't think is good enough with some good evolutions. And maybe they're hinting at a good Jolteon and a good Vaporeon or Glaceon by having water and lightning energy in the Sylveon EX's attack cost here. Possibly. We'll have to wait and see. So if those do come out, this might be a card you want to pick up if they do print some other good evolutions because the EV in the set, I actually did add to my buy list because the EV is so good. But yeah, 270 HP, Magical Charm, 160 for Psychic Double Colorless, and then you take 100 less damage from attacks. That's never been a great effect on cards. It's always been like, okay, Gudra V-Star was okay, and it had a similar effect. And then the 
Uh, second attack here for the Water, Lightning, and Psychic. Choose two of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Shuffle those Pokemon and all cards. Attach them into your opponent's deck. If one of your Pokemon uses this attack during your last turn, this attack can't be used. So you can't chain the attack. You're not drawing prize cards. You're not putting damage in play. It is okay. But like I said, with some additional evolutions, good evolutions, this could be a good option in like an evolution type deck. But by itself, I don't think it quite... Uh, makes the cut the Dene up next electromagnetic sonar put a trainer card from your discard pile into your hand for a colorless energy we currently have this in for in the format in the form of reggie lucky that has three retreat cost which is kind of iffy and it does have more hp but that does rotate with rotation so once again future proofing for the future Dene puts a trainer card could be good in future control decks that's it one to Dene onto the buy list up next we have the Ndidi with the obliging heal when you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench during your turn you may heal 30 damage from your active Pokemon and have a recover from a special condition which is an okay ability to have around if there's a lot of paralysis around in the form it's kind of an answer to potential paralysis that could come up with the format so once again it's not happening right now in the current format. I don't think anything's paralyzing anything, but you never know when paralysis is going to be an irrelevant or a relevant special condition that you want to be able to deal with. So the Ndidi makes his way onto the buy list as a one of. Um, up next, the Gimme Ghoul. Uh, yeah, this is good. <laughs> this is the best Gimme Ghoul in Golden Go right now. Now, or not right now, because it's not out yet. Because the other Gimme Ghoul has Call for Family, which is probably better than Minor Errand running, but it has 50 HP. And we're trying to play around Dusclops and Dragapult attacks in the current meta, in the current format. Now, that might change in the future. And the 50 HP Gimme Ghoul might make a comeback. But for right now, 70 HP is the way to go. And that minor errand running on this Gimme Ghoul is way better than the continuous coin toss on the other Gimme Ghoul. Search your deck for two basic psychic energy or two basic energy cards, not just psychics or not just metals. Two basic energy cards, reveal them and put them into your hand, then shuffle your deck for a colorless energy. That is not bad to do on your first turn going second as gimme ghoul oh i also put this flittle on my buy list as well i mean as pathor is not really doing anything right now but this flittle is definitely decent compared to the other flittles we have out there for a call for a call of synergy has got that splashing dodge 10 damage with a coin of heads during your opponent's next turn prevent all damage and effects of attacks done to this pokemon only 40 hp now the 30 hp flittle does have free retreat cost but that is a pretty good attack to potentially have around as an option in the splashing or splashing dodge yeah so made its way to the buy list as a one of Okay, uh, Flygon here didn't make it to the buy list, but I think there is like potential to make a cool deck still. 310 HP, Reversing Storm for a Fighting Energy does 130. You may switch with one of your bench Pokemon. And then that Sonic attack here for the Water Fighting Metal. You do 100 damage to each of your opponent's Pokemon EX and Pokemon V. This attack isn't affected by weakness or resistance. So that's a potentially a ton of damage to put into play. Manaphy is still currently around. Now, who knows what's, what the future will hold. Terra Pokemon exist and will be around for quite a while. And the Flagon is a Terra Pokemon itself. And then the hit and run attack is only doing 130 damage. But we can run into stuff like Klefki or Mimikyu, Fighting Ogre Pawn, uh, Drafferig EX or whatever the other thing, whatever it's called. You guys know the Pokemon I'm talking about. It's the Giraffe Pokemon. The stage one, it says it can't be hit by basic Pokemon EX. So all those exist as things to potentially reversing storm into. But yeah, I don't think it's going to be a great deck overall. Could be a cool, uh, cool meme deck though. Have to wait and see. Um, up next, we got the Gastrodon, which also didn't make its way onto the buy list because I think this thing is just kind of terrible. So it's not very good. As long as this Pokemon is on your bench, bench stage two Pokemon, both yours and yours opponent, both yours and your opponents have no ability. So if this is on the bench and state the stage two is on the bench the stage two doesn't have an ability but if the stage two goes to the active it has an ability or if the gastron gets gusted into the active you gain access to your stage two pokemon's abilities there's just too many ways to play around this thing the main bench sitter in the format is the pidgeot ex as well which unfortunately for gastron has free retreat so I assume whatever you're playing Gastrodon with is trying to draw prize cards. So let's say you draw a prize card, then your opponent pushes Pidgeot to the active, uses Quick Search, retreats to their attacker, and then continues as normal. Sounds mid. It's a lot to set up for no guaranteed return. Yeah, Gastrodon, I think, is bad. Did not make its way to the buy list uh, at all. Um, did I miss anything here? I don't think I missed anything here. All right, up next is the Coridon with the Unrelenting Onslaught, 30 plus 150 more damage if one of your other ancient Pokemon use an attack during your last turn. For two colorless energy, just another one prize option for Raging Bolt or a potential inclusion in Ancient Box. 
I think it's probably going to be better as a potential one prize option in the Raging Bolt deck. I just made it to my buy list as a two of. It could be played in Ancient Boxes as like a one or two of, but it doesn't seem ridiculously powerful in Ancient Box. It seems like maybe the best one prizer for certain metas in Raging Bolt, and that's probably about it. Uh, the Hydrogon EX didn't make its way to my buy list, but I'm actually really excited to play with this card, to be honest. The Obsidian attack is super, super cool. It's got 330 HP, Terra Pokemon, of course. The Crushing Headbutt for 200 damage for a Dark and a Colors, and then discard the top three cards of your opponent's deck. Honestly, the more I've thought about the first attack, the more I'm like, it's okay. It's not It's not actually that bad. It's all right. And it's got that Obsidian attack here for a Psychic, Dark, Metal, Colorless. It does 130 damage, and then it does 130 damage to two of your opponent's benched Pokemon. That's not terrible, to be honest. That's actually not terrible. That is actually okay. It's a lot of damage. Getting there is tough, though. It's a lot of energy. We can get counter gain involved. Assuming we're, like, using this attack twice uh, to, like, win the game in, like, two attacks, then we can go for, like, an Obsidian for, you know, uh, we can, like, set up one Hydreigon, maybe two, and then we can get counter gain involved. We can get Neo Upper Energy involved. I made a build with Turbo Energize in it. And then also manual attachments return can get us there as well. Of course, that would maybe become the Neo upper energy depending on the situation. So, yep, it seems like you can set it up and get it set up, but I think it's a little bit too much to set up. So yeah, Hydreigon does not make its way into my buy list. Uh, but when I started actually putting a deck together, I was like, okay, this has more potential than I was like initially giving it credit for. This actually doesn't seem terrible. There's definitely like something here to make like at least a cool deck out of. I just don't think it'll be a competitive deck. Um, all right, uh, up next is the Archlodon, which did make its way to my buy list. And uh, I did add this Duraludon to my buy list as well as a four of. It's a little bit different than the other one. For three metal energy, it does hit for 130. Then you discard two energy from this Pokemon. The other Duraludon does 80 plus 10 more damage for each damage counter on it for two metal and a colorless. So I could definitely see a situation where you'd want this Duraludon instead. It really depends on what you're potentially trying to KO with the Duraludon. Or if you want to get Relicanth involved to be able to use the Duraludon's revenge attack, the other Duraludon's revenge attack as Archlodon, that would be an option as well. Really depends on the meta, the format, yada, 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 all that kind of cool stuff. So I've uh, went and added four of these to the buy list alongside the four Archlodon EX, which I don't think it'll be great on release, but I think it has uh, potential in the future. 300 HP, it's got the Assemble Alloy ability. When you play this Pokemon from your hand to evolve one of your Pokemon during your turn, you may attach up to two basic metal energy cards from your discard pile to your po metal Pokemon in any way you like. So it doesn't have to be just to the Archlodon, it can be anywhere, which is how we could theoretically set up this Duraludon for a uh, Dorala Beam. <laughs> I don't know. It's not a very creative attack name there. Um, and then it's got that Metal Defender for 220 damage. It's not a ton of damage. It is a stage one with 300 HP and it self accelerates the energy as well, which is pretty good for three metals. And then during your next turn, this Pokemon has no weakness. So Fire Weakness completely removed, which is pretty nice. I mean, Radiant Charge Art isn't going to be around here forever, but I'm sure there'll be other Fire Pokemon in the future that will be happy that effect exists. Um, I added this Golden Go to my buy list as a one of as well. A potential one prize option in Golden Go. I like the idea of it. You don't actually hit that hard with this card, though. That Strike It Rich for a Metal Energy does 30 plus 90 more if you evolved this from a Gimme Gold this turn. But a one prize option is better than no one prize options. Unless you want to play like a continuous tumble or continuous coin toss Gimme Gold and hope that works out. Beat on tip for 120 doesn't sound terrible. KO stuff like B-Barrel even maybe. Leaving a one prize or interactive. I don't know. Seems decent. It does have two or three costs, which can be kind of awkward, uh, but it does have that surf back attack for three colors. You may shuffle this Pokemon in all cards attached into your deck. So you can get it out of there if it gets stuck in the active for a little bit too long. Uh, the Iron Crown here. Um, did I add the Iron Crown to my boss? Hold up. Where am I at? Golden Goo. No, I did not add this Iron Crown. I think I maybe thought about it. All right, let's talk about Alolan Executor EX. I added the Execute to my buy list. Alolan Executor EX did not make the cut though. I don't think this card's very good. 300 HP, Tropical Frenzy for a uh, a grass and a water. 150, you may attach any number of basic energy cards from your hand to your Pokemon in any way you like. But for only 150 damage, that's not great. Unless we're setting up something else cool with this. And even if we are, I don't think it's going to be enough. And then Swain's fine for a grass water fighting. Flip a coin. If heads, knock out your opponent's active basic Pokemon. If tails, knock out one of your opponent's benched basic Pokemon. So basically, to make sure this thing works, we need to make sure the active is a basic Pokemon. And then we need to flip a coin. And if we get heads, we knock out the active basic Pokemon. If tails, we knock out a benched basic Pokemon. And the active has to be a basic, because otherwise, if we get heads and it's not a basic, we did nothing. So, yeah, I could see maybe 
a world where this is okay as a one of in Reggie Drago, but even then, I don't think so. I think we have better attacking options that guarantee better effects. Yeah, the Alone Executor seems pretty mid as its own deck, even and even as an inclusion in the uh, Reggie Drago deck. So yeah, Alone Executor does not make the cut. Uh, up next, we got, well, actually, hold on. Before we get to the EV, let's talk about the Tatsugiri EX. 160 HP, surprise pump for a fighting in a water, 100 damage. This attack's damage isn't affected by any effects on your opponent's active Pokemon. So an effective shred attack here. And then for fire, water, dark, a Cinnabar lure. Look at the top 10 cards of your deck. You may put any number of Pokemon you find there onto your bench. So if you add the other cards back into your deck, really high cost. Could theoretically do a two turn two with Sparkling Crystal, of course. And we could set up some crazy combos with the Cinnabar Lure. But I think it's nothing more than a meme, unfortunately. Although, if this card was good, that would be sick. That would be insanely cool if Tatsugiri X was a competitive Pokemon TCG deck. I would love that, but I don't think it quite makes the cut. But um, I don't think I'm going to work with this card ever. It's one of those cards where it's like, this one is going to... To make this thing work, you'd have to have a headache. But I would be excited to see what someone like LDF comes up with, to be honest, with the Tatsugiri EX, because he is always cooking some crazy decks. Uh, all right, up next is this Eevee with an insanely just good ability, kind of like the execu uh, Execute, like I mentioned earlier. Like, the Execute's attack is really good. That's why I added to my buy list. This Eevee's uh, ability is really good. That's why I added to my buy list. Boosted Evolution, as long as this Pokemon is in the active spot, it can evolve during your first turn turn or the turn you play it so it kind of breaks the evolution rule but it does have to be in the active but that's just that's just really good so four of on the buy list insane ability any pokemon would love that ability any basic pokemon any evolution pokemon uh, up next is the slacking ex with that born to slack ability if your opponent has no pokemon ex or pokemon v in play this attack this pokemon can't attack and then for two colorless energy great swing 280 discard an energy from this pokemon so in the current format we do have double turbo energy uh we do have double turbo energy and then we also have another slacking in the format that for three colorless energy does 240 damage so you can use that with reversal energy potentially uh the slacking i didn't end up putting on my buy list but i was very close to and this is definitely the one this is the card i think i'm the closest to being like i feel like slacking has the potential or the most potential to for me to be wrong about not adding it to my buy list to be honest i think slacking has the most potential for me to be wrong about not adding it to my buy list but i'm not 100 sure so yeah didn't make its way to the buy list it's a lot of damage it can keep up with two prize decks pretty well like maridons or like raging bolts but as soon as you get into the territory of like charizard exes and dragapults i think the deck starts to struggle uh even stuff like v star pokemon like reggie drago can be tough now you can play like choice belt or other auto modifiers to actually get those big bigger one hit ko's on those 280 hp pokemon and I actually put together a list with gravity mountain which we'll talk about here in a second and maximum belt so you can actually one hit ko charizard ex or dragapult but even with all that i think the card still comes up a little bit short but it's really close and i would love for it to be good but I did not add it to my buy list. Okay, and I think that is all the cards. Uh, oh, we got a new mouse hold here coming out with the Familial March for a Colorless Energy. Search your deck for up to two in any combination of mouse hold and mouse hold EX and put them onto your bench and shuffle your deck. Is it finally time for a good meme mouse hold deck? Probably not, but you know, they're trying out here. They keep adding to the possibilities. Uh, and then finally for the Colorless Pokemon, we have a Terrapagos here. And Nani X Terrapagos with that Prism Charge for a Colorless Energy. Search your deck for up to three basic energy cards of different types. And attach them to your Terra Pokemon in any way you like. Pretty good Terra Charging card here. Made its way to the buy list as a two of. I'm not sure exactly what Terra Pokemon I would like to play this with. You could potentially combo this with Pikachu EX. But I think Joltik is a little bit better in Pikachu EX. So currently, I don't know where Terrapagos fits. But it might have a future somewhere. All right, let's get into these trainer cards. There's a lot of them to go through. The first one is a A-Spec, the Amulet of Hope. A pretty niche A-Spec, to be honest. If the Pokemon this card is attached to is knocked out by damage from an attack from your opponent's Pokemon, search your deck for up to three cards and put them into your hand. Then shuffle your deck. So it is a tool card here. If one has to knock the thing out with it on it, then you get any three cards. I mean, if you can find this, would you would you have rather just found Prime Catcher and played Prime Catcher for your turn? Probably. Seems like a super niche Amulet of Hope. I'd be very curious to see if this ever makes its way into, like, a competitive deck. I don't think so. Um, but it did make its way to my buy list because it is an A-spec. <laughs> it's still on my buy list as a one-of. Uh, we got the 
something berry if the pokemon this card is attached to is damaged by an attack from your opponent's metal pokemon it takes 60 less damage and discard this card made its way to my bios as a four of and i'll mention the mention the colber berry here as well real fast the same thing but for dark pokemon take 60 less damage and then discard it so these berry cards are super matchup specific cards but we've seen cards that like them in the past like the gloves there was a time when charizard played the extra damage to dark pokemon gloves for the mirror match uh, these could definitely find their spot in a deck in the future would not surprise me at all so yeah both made its way to the buy list as a four of each brilliant blender of course made it as a one of because it is an ace spec searcher deck for up to five cards and discard them then shuffle your deck pretty cool there's definitely some decks in the current format that synergize pretty well with this like united wings and the kofu deck uh Cerro ledge could maybe take advantage of this even it even lugia this synergizes with lugia i'm not sure it's better than legacy energy of course i don't think it is but it does synergize with lugia you could make a lugia build around brilliant blender and just kind of see how it goes it sounds like it'll probably be worse than legacy energy but you never know until you try but we probably don't need to try to be honest all right call bell i am so sad that this card exists and i put it on my buy list because it's just another turbo card i don't think we need more turbo cards in the format you're only playing this in a super aggressive turbo deck call bell you can only use this card you can use this card only if you go second and only during your first turn search your deck for a supporter reveal it and put it into your hand then shuffle your deck so basically yeah go second find your sada attack turn one a little bit more consistently i i just i i don't know i don't know how to feel about that it made its way to the bios as a four of though because if it's good it's good uh chill teaser toy <laughs> did make its way to my buy list and whenever i put a trainer on my buy list i always put it as a four of I didn't even add the meow stick to the buy list that combos with this card as an ability but that's because it actually has an effect on it besides just discarding it with meow stick you can use this card only if you go second and only during your first turn put an energy attached one of your opponent's pokemon into their hand we've actually seen a card exactly like this wait and see hammer that did the exact same thing and it was decent in the format in the meta that it was played in now chill teaser Seems a little bit less good. There's a lot of energy acceleration going out immediately when this card comes out. But who knows what the future holds for something like the Chill Teaser toy. The possibilities are limitless um, if they are restricted to the first turn of the game going second. Could be pretty good in a future format. Uh, Wayne C. Hammer was good at some point. Yeah, I'm not... Uh... Not passing by on the chill teaser toy could be good uh clement's quick wit heals 60 damage from each of your lightning pokemon once again a potentially good tech supporter card against some kind of weird spread situation made its way to the buy list as a four of as well counter gain if you have more prize cards remaining than your opponent tax used by the pokemon this card is attached to cost colorless less also made its way to the buy list as a four of yeah counter gain seems pretty good it's definitely a good card so added those there as well uh i'm not gonna i forget how to pronounce this i went over it with my chat the other day getting the correct pronunciation but i forget it so i'm not even gonna try search your deck for up to three pokemon ex reveal them and put them into your hand also made with a my list as a four of seems like an interesting inclusion in some exx in the future and even in even in on turns like past turn one or turn two it still could be good because you could go search out like pheasantipity right you could go get like a couple attackers or set up pokemon or whatever you need plus pheasantipity so it becomes like a pseudo draw supporter in the mid late game still so definitely an interesting card i think it'll probably find its home into a competitive deck or two in its uh lifespan in uh in the format uh deduction kit this did not make its way to the buy list this card is truly awful unless it's in some unless it's in some weird ultra turbo turbo deck like look at the top three cards of your deck put them back in any order order or shuffle them and put them on the bottom of your deck so like theoretically in some ultra turbo turbo deck you can combo this with stuff like pokestop or radiant greninja to look at the top three and then decide if you want to pokestop into those three or put them on the bottom and then pokestop into the next three to increase our odds by that little bit more of actually hitting what we need to pull off some weird turn one ultra combo yeah this card seems uh, a little overcooked does not seem great did not make way to the buy list and if this card ever becomes good i would be scared of the meta or format that we're in if this is being played in decks out there because the only thing i could ever imagine playing this in is some weird ultra turbo deck and we'd be, have to be at a point in a meta where you'd have to like be trying to out turbo your opponent to the extent that you would play this card and this card is terrible so when you get to the point where you're playing this card the meta and format are probably also terrible so we should all hope this card never sees play it would be a bad day for everyone uh dragon elixir heal 60 damage from your active dragon pokemon it's an item card that's a lot of healing for an item card four of on the buy list not a bad card uh draw snuff shuffle your hand into your deck then flip a coin of heads draw 
eight if tails draw three terrible card don't want to talk about it great and look at the top seven cards of your deck you may reveal a pokemon and trainer card you find there put them into your hand shuffle the other cards back into your deck this did not make its way onto my buy list i think this card is pretty bad now theoretically it's pretty good i guess like i don't know you could look at the top seven you can get like a stage two and a rare candy but the inconsistency of this card is just bad maybe like once arvin rotates and irida like this becomes like a good option to kind of fill the void that those cards would leave but this card is so bad i just can't see that happening i can't just play a research and draw seven just play a research what are we doing just play a research and draw seven dusk ball did make its way onto my buy list as a four of look at the bottom seven cards of your deck you may reveal a pokemon you find there put it into your hand shuffle the other cards back into your deck so kind of a reverse great ball thing going on here great ball i think on average is better but i think it is possible you could play a deck with four great ball and four dusk ball it is possible it could happen so four of on the buy list i think great ball comes first in most decks but uh maybe we want that like seventh or fifth great ball it could happen energy search pro search your deck for any number of basic energy cards of different types reveal them and put them into your hand then shuffle your deck so this card is it's like pretty powerful right like there's if you just think about the conversion you're playing one card to theoretically get eight cards that is just a big trade-off in terms of card value now card value in pokemon it doesn't really mean as much in other in other card games like hand size or a card advantage where like if you have five cards in hand your opponent has two and something like Yu-Gi-Oh or magic that definitely makes a bigger deal in pokemon it doesn't matter that much but if you still think about it and you think about how costly ultra ball and even like earth and vessel sometimes feel then you can maybe rationalize and understand why this card can theoretically be so powerful. You could even think about this like playing this in a Golden Go deck, which is probably where it fits best immediately. You could like play Energy Search Pro and then like play three Ultra Balls and go get three Golden Goes or something like that, which is not bad. <laughs> That's like a kind of cool combo to do. So insane card value. However, card value in Pokemon doesn't mean as much, but a potential one for eight is... That's a lot. <laughs> So good niche A spec, really cool niche A spec. I really, really like this card design. I'm just like a big fan of the card. It's like not that ridiculously good, obviously. Pairs best in gold and go immediately, but pretty niche like the other, a lot of the other A specs uh, outside of that. All right, Gravity Mountain. Each stage two Pokemon in play, both yours and your opponents gets 30 less HP. I'm not sure how I feel about this card. I feel like stage twos are already kind of taking a beating overall. They don't need to be beaten down anymore. Um, but maybe once the format or meta slows down a little bit, I'll be happy for a card like Gravity Mountain. But very good card, I think. It's like a triple plus power on a stadium card, so it could potentially stick in play for multiple turns to so take advantage of it on future turns. It's kind of good, to be honest. Good stadium card for sure. Uh, Jasmine's Gaze, pretty terrible card during your opponent's next turn. All of your Pokemon take 30 less damage from attacks from your opponent's Pokemon. I just don't see a potential use case for this card. I guess you could be playing a deck that you just get KO'd. Like, you have a Pokemon that has 300 HP, and your opponent's Pokemon does... 300 damage hit him with the jasmine's gaze survive the turn potentially repeat it is possible now it is um uh, all of your pokemon so even if your active pokemon gets switched out your next active pokemon and your bench pokemon are taking reduced damage so playing something like this in charizard to like play around pikachu ex going gravity mountain plus knockout could be an interesting tech card for matchups in the future I think I've just talked myself into adding this onto my buy list. Jasmine's Gaze is now on the buy list as a four of. I've talked myself into it. At first, it wasn't on the buy list, but I think I've literally just talked myself into this one. So it's on the buy list. Alicia's Appeal, it's kind of just a bad boss's orders, but I did add it to my buy list as a four of. Switch one of your opponent's bench basic Pokemon to the active. If you do, the new active Pokemon is now confused. Obviously, that's just worse than boss because boss can bring up anything. Alicia's Appeal could only bring up basics, but I think because of the printing of this card, Maybe even like the meow stick is an indication of this as well. And the fact that boss's orders hasn't been reprinted yet. I think boss's orders will rotate two years from now and Lissy's appeal will be legal. So I'm prepping for two years from now. <laughs> I guess there could be a deck out there that plays four boss already. And it's like, I need one more gust. I need one more gust and I don't want to play prime catcher. All right, Lissy's appeal it is. Uh, we also have Pokemon catcher in the four myself. So if you're playing that much gust, you probably just commit to Pokemon catcher. So I'm really... Like this, this is a sign to me that boss's orders will be rotating two years from now because this card, it just doesn't make any sense to exist if boss's orders continues to exist. Like it's not even like an interesting extra effect. Like it's limited to basic Pokemon so you can confuse them. Like it's not, like I even feel like the bad draw supporters have something more interesting going on. It's like, this isn't research, but there's something more interesting happening here than just 
this, you know what I'm saying, in comparison to boss's order. So I'm like hopeful that that is a good sign of boss's orders rotating. Um, lively stadium, each basic Pokemon in play, both the original opponents gets plus 30 HP. Passive stadiums like this are usually not great. Unlike Gravity Mountain, where you reduce the HP of the stage two Pokemon by 30 immediately, you can take advantage of that immediately. You can put Gravity Mountain in play and then like knock out a Charizard by doing 300 damage. Lively stadium, you could put it in play with your Maridon and then maybe immediately if your opponent can't bump the stadium, they can't knock out your active Maridon, but then they go Gust KO something they can knock out because you put the stadium in play or they bump your stadium and then knock you out. So lively stadium, it did make its way onto my Bylas as a forum. Passive stadiums aren't always terrible. Path to the Peak is a good example of that. And usually when you play them, you want to play them in a count of like four. So that way you can constantly keep them in play as aggressively as possible. Or we could enter an eventual meta where stadiums just aren't that popular. So just playing like two lively stadium, as soon as you find that first one, it just sticks in play like the whole game. If not against every matchup, maybe just the key matchups where you need it. Medellin Memo also made its way to the bio. So as a four of your opponent counts the cards in their hand, shuffle those cards and puts them on the bottom of their deck. If they do draw, they if they do, they draw that many cards. The last time I tried to read this, I also stuttered over that. Uh, so some kind of weird hand lock deck combo card. If you can like Iona your opponent to one and then look at their hand and you don't like what you see, hit them with that Medellin Memo, put it back on the bottom, give them something new and hope that card is not as good as the last card that they just had. Not that I really want some kind of hand lock deck to exist, but if it does, Medellin Memo might be part of it. Megaton Blower. Man, they are trying to get rid of Lugia with this card for sure. I don't even know when in the future this would else be good, unless they are going to come out with some other special energy board flood type card. Discard all Pokemon tool cards. Or Pokemon Tools, they're not even called Pokemon Tools, it doesn't even say Pokemon Tool cards. Pokemon Tools and special energy from all of your opponent's Pokemon, and discard a stadium in play. So it just, just gets rid of everything. It's the Mega, the Megaton Blower, blow everything off the field except for Pokemon and basic energy. Yeah, anti-Lugia card, and that's kind of it, to be honest. I guess you could also argue this could be an anti-Raging Bolt card if they have enough Bravery Charms in play, but you could also just play a Jamming Tower, so you wouldn't want to waste your Ace back on that, so yeah. Uh, pretty good card against Lugia. In the future, who knows what will have special energy. One of on the buy list. Miracle Headset also did make its, uh, make its way to the buy list as a one of. Although, this card is pretty mid right now. Put up to two supporter cards from your discard pile into your hand. Is this really ever better than playing like Prime Catcher? Especially if one of those supporters you're getting back is sometimes going to be boss's orders maybe. And even then, is, do we really want to devote our ace spec to you know, to get back stuff like Iono more aggressively when we could just play a pal pad or just play another Iono and then still play prime catcher or unfair stamp. Probably not. This card is like good in decks that are like ultra late game decks or if they ever reprint Lieutenant Surge, uh, Lieutenant Surge's, is it just Lieutenant Surge? Lieutenant Surge is something, I think. Lieutenant Surge allows you to play two supporters during your turn if you were behind. So you could play Lieutenant Surge and then play a supporter and then play a supporter this could combo with a card like that, maybe, but I don't know if they're going to give us back Lieutenant. It was probably a bad card to have ever printed to begin with, to be honest. So, yeah, this card is mid. Another mid niche A spec. This one's like, feels like ultra niche, though, because it's like the supporters you could recover, Iono or like Boss, are like the two best supporters in the game right now. I don't even know if you consider Iono that good, to be honest. Arvin might be the second best supporter, but Boss is one of them. You could play Prime Catcher. It's an item. And then Iono, you could play Unfair Stamp. It's an item. Yeah. Uh, Pasho Berry, another berry, reduce the damage from water Pokemon by 60, then discard this card. Another four of on the list, you never know. Precious Trolley did make its way to the buy list as a one of search your deck for any number of basic Pokemon and put them onto your bench, then shuffle your deck. It's not bad. You can get five basic Pokemon. If you got Area Zero and a uh, other Pokemon in play, a uh, Terra Pokemon in play, then you can get uh, like seven Pokemon, which is pretty good. So Precious Trolley seems okay. Niche though, overall, we've got, got a lot of good Pokemon search right now. Nest Ball, Buddy Buddy Poffin. And if you're going to go find this aggressively early on in games, you'd have to use like Irida or Arvin, which can already find Nest Ball or Poffin. Irida could find a water Pokemon as well. So do we really want to waste our A-Spec spot on this? Uh, not sure. Definitely niche, but has potential. Uh, Scramble Switch, also another niche A-Spec card here. Although I think this will be really good in Regidrago. I think Regidrago is really going to like Scramble Switch. Switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. If you do, you may move any number of any amount and move any amount of energy from the Pokemon you move to the bench to the new active so you can have an Ogre Pond on the bench with a grass energy and accelerate another grass energy to it after they KO'd your active and then you can scramble switch into your Reggie Drago and put two grass on it and then attach a fire and it's set up it's ready to go again oh, yeah I think this will be really good in Reggie Drago now Prime Catcher was really good in Reggie Drago as well 
But I think we can supplement that by playing like a higher boss count. And because of how much more aggressively we can set up our Reggie Dragos through Scramble Switch, we won't have to like play research for our turn to go get a bunch of cards. So super powerful card in Reggie Drago for sure. Surfer, switch your active Pokemon with one of your bench Pokemon. If you do, draw cards until you have five in your hand. Nothing super impressive, but we've had cards like this in the past, and they've always made their way, way into competitive decks throughout their existence in the standard format. Some of you remember, maybe remember Bird Keeper. Some of you maybe don't. Some of you maybe didn't play the game when Bird Keeper was a card, but it switched your active to the bench. You drew three cards. It was a cool card to include as a one of in some decks. Surfer makes his way to the buy list as a four of. The techni uh, Technical Machine Fluorite, the Fluorite Attack a grass a water and a psychic discard all energy from this pokemon and heal all damage from each of your terra pokemon i just don't know how we are setting this up you could use it with cram and the loss zone combo because cram can use technical machines without using their energy cost because of its ability but i just don't know we have to have like a terra pokemon in play that has to have damage on it we ideally like for this thing to like get value we probably need multiple terra pokemon in play with damage on them we have to get like a cram in our active because otherwise, like, the things that we have in play that have damage on them had to be, like, our attackers with energy. But then we set up another Pokemon with a grass, a water, and a psychic on it. And then we heal our... It just, it just seems so ridiculous for this thing ever to do anything. It did not make its way to the to the buy list. But Terra Orb did. Search your deck for a Terra Pokemon, reveal it, and put it into your hand, then shuffle your deck. Now, I don't think it's going to be played as a four of in many Terra decks. But a one of in, like, Charizard seems really good. Or Dragapult. Stuff like that. We do have Featherball. In the format now the reason you'd want to include this in something like charizard is because ultra ball sucks so when you're like planning out a turn two hand with charizard sometimes you can't quite get there or it's like super costly to get there and you have to like play double ultra ball to get the charizard and the pidgeot now we do a feather ball in the format to potentially use to already do that to get pidgeot where we can go like oh we can arvin for feather ball for seal stone and then we play the four seal stone to get a candy candy pidgeot and then we use pidgeot to get charizard or to get candy and then we ultra ball once instead of twice to go get our charizard candy out charizard but the thing is feather ball falls off immediately after like turn two or as soon as we get our pidgeot out but terra ball or excuse me terra orb doesn't fall off until later in the game because we don't just need one charizard or one dragapult we need multiple dragapult or multiple charizard throughout a game and even if you look at the most popular way to play dragapult right now which is uh, Ryuki's Dragapult build that doesn't even play Pidgeot. You can only play Ultra Ball to find your Dragapults. It'd be pretty nice to not have to Ultra Ball away or discard two cards to find a Dragapult. That's where Terra Orb would slot in very, very nicely as a one of. It did make its way to the buy list as a four of because you never know in the future we might want more of these, but currently one of in those decks seems pretty good. So yeah, Terra Orb, definitely a good card. It's not like a, yeah, it's not gonna be like a four of in like Terrapagos or anything like that. I think you play zero of these in Terrapagos, but the Evolution Terra decks really really like this card for sure uh we got time here terrible card <laughs> did not make its way to the buy list tell your opponent the name of a pokemon in your hand and put that pokemon face down in front of you your opponent guesses that pokemon's hp and then you reveal it if your opponent if your opponent guessed right they draw four cards if they guess wrong you draw four cards then return the pokemon to your hand it's actually kind of funny i saw like a meme someone made on twitter where it's like oh all these new char cadets with the different hp this is lining up for a char cadet time deck where you play the 60 hp the 70 hp and the 80 hp char cadet and then you play time and then your opponent has to guess which guess which char cadet did you put in front of you and then even if they guess wrong you lose anyways because char cadet sucks all right up next enriching energy here as long as this card is attached to a pokemon it provides colorless energy when you attach this card from your hand to a pokemon draw four cards very niche a spec i've seen some people talking about this one as far as like a pidgeot v type engine you like bench pidgeot v attach enriching energy draw four cards and you shuffle the pidgeot v back to your deck and then we have to somehow find pidgeot v and the enriching energy again i don't think so i don't think this is it i don't think it's that good it's a pretty mid a spec niche a spec no a specs are truly terrible they're just niche there's good a specs there's niche a specs enriching energy seems like a niche a spec it seems okay and that is my it did make its way to my bios as one of it that is my complete surging sparks set review and buy list almost an hour long video i looked over at my recording right now almost an hour long all right let me know comment section down below what did i miss what combos did i miss what cards should i have talked about i think i didn't miss a single good card or a card worth talking about but you might think i'm wrong so let me know in the comment section down below
buy list will be in the description in a link down below as well as the link to this site because i'm sure some of you have already commented even though i mentioned it literally at the uh at the beginning of uh of this video the link for this site will also be in the description down below if you want to check this out it's just on the main pokemon website it's just like their set gallery uh landing page or whatever so check it out i'll catch you all in the next video peace